Hi. Wow. I'm doing it. Okay. So this is going to be my very first video for my YouTube channel, The Craft of Wellness. And The Craft of Wellness actually is going to be a whole bunch of different things in there. But basically, we're going to go through my, my self-care journey to my authentic self. And everything that I learn and everything that I practice and everything that I get from it, I'm going to share with you because I am telling you, doing this whole self-care thing is life-changing. And I'll give you so many examples of how that is. And so I've got my goals and my dreams and my desires and my dog right here. Talk about Sadie. Sadie. There she is. And that's also some of the books and stuff that I've been using that I will share with you as well. I gotta see what's going on with her. Come here, baby girl. Come here. One thing I've learned is that time is short and precious. And you know what? I could shoo her away. And I can tell her to go lay down. But you know what? She's gonna be 13 in March and I'm not gonna have her much longer. And so I'm gonna take this second to just give her that attention that she needs. Acknowledge, right? Give her what she needs, fill that love cup up, and then I can carry on. And that's the way pretty much that I'm starting to live my life, like that. With the realizing that time is not really on our side. Maybe it's because I'm turning 50 in a couple years and I'm starting to click, right? But really, it isn't. And pushing someone away or not doing what you want to do or not being who you are, wow, what a waste of time that is that you're not going to get back. Because when you do finally do this and you be you, you find your authentic self, you'd wish you would have done it so many years ago. Like, really? If I could talk to the 20 year old me, but what's really interesting is that I have. And the 20 year old me has been doing things that led me up to here. And you can see it on the tattoos throughout my body, but that's a whole other conversation that we'll have. I have so many video ideas. This could be like forever. It's abundant. Okay, anyway, still you're trying to figure out why you're actually watching me here and what I'm talking about. So here's where I'm at. Um, I committed to a self-care journey to my authentic self December 19th, 2021. And yes, today is January 30th, 2023. So some time has gone by from my very first intentional step on my self-care journey to my authentic self. Of course, there are things that led up to this journey, right? 48 years worth of stuff, but specifically, I think probably like six months before I actually started. Um, so we'll talk about that as well and how I got started. And then we'll talk about why I'm actually doing this. And that's why I'll start right now. Why am I doing this video? because I have been journaling and documenting this journey for the last year and a bit, right? With no intention of anyone seeing what I've done and there's gonna be a lot of things that people aren't gonna see. But why am I now doing this on video? And the reason why is like I had said, this whole self-care thing is life-changing. The way that it changes you, the way that you see the world, the way that you feel that lightness, dare I say, happy, joy, content, right? Like these things are such beautiful, peaceful feelings to have and to hold. That I want everybody to be like this. I said to a friend the other day, hmm, you know how you roll your eyes when you run into CrossFit people? <sighs> yeah. They're right up there with the vegans and keto are just as bad. But you know what? I'm self-care and that's the way I'm gonna be. Self-care all the way. I cannot stress the importance and what that looks like. And I will guide you through that because my self-care practices may look a little bit different than yours and that's okay, right? Because self-care is about connecting to your true self, your identity within, your authentic self. Self-care is actually showing to the universe, to the world, to yourself, that you are worthy, that you are worth it. You are worthy of love. 
You are worthy of being heard and validated. You play a vital role in this world. It's actually really true. And the things that you learn about yourself throughout this, hmm, not shocking. We know a lot about self. And kind of, ooh, dirty, didn't really like that, but we had to acknowledge it about self. But all these things make us who we are. And I think that's beautiful. And once we identify that and live with our true authentic self, where our values and our beliefs are aligned with the direction and the path, the journey that we're on, you get that peace, that feeling. Uh, peace isn't quite the word, but it's the only word that I think we have right now for that. Okay. So, again, why am I doing the video? Because I want to share. But why this? Well, through my journey, and I'll talk about that in the next couple videos and stuff, but through my journey, um, I turn to people who are in this field who are on their own paths and how do they do it and what does it look like and what does it mean? Um, and of course, so I, I reach out and I find people like, uh, my girlfriend really loves the Jay Shetty. So she hooked me up with him. Mm -hmm. Not really my thing, he's okay. No offense or anything, Jay. Love to be on your show if you ever see me. <laughs> but he would interview people and then that would get me looking into people and then, you know, it just trickles down and then that person has their own podcast and this and this and you learn so much. Well, I stumbled across Mel Robbins. Again, there's something about her I wasn't quite sure about when I actually, I heard her on Jay Shetty. Um, but... I listened to her and then she was on another podcast and I listened to her and I, my colleague a little while ago actually had recommended the high five habit. She swore by it. She got her clients to do it. I said I would buy the book. Never did. Don't really care. Change now. I am ordering it. It's here. Like it will be here soon. I'll read it and I'll talk about it now because my colleague really does speak highly of it. Great success stories if you ever want to talk to her about it. Anyway, so, um, but I came across her very first episode, okay, on her podcast. And she did it when she was 54 years old, and um, she kind of went back into her life. And I guess she did a video when she was 52, her birthday, and it was a really hard time for her, and she was at a really hard place, and she made some decisions and choices on this video talking about it go I'll link it I think I can do that I'll figure it out I'll link it to you but anyway and so um, she basically kind of reflected and went back and where she was within two years of that video and how different her life is and she identified three things to manifesting right and one of them and I'll talk about them later and she talks about them better than I can but one of the ones that she had for number three was find evidence that you can do it well, she's my evidence, right? And uh, my kid has like a TikTok thing, so that's evidence. And Jay Shetty, that's evidence. And even like Gabor Mate, he's evidence. And like all these people, um, Deepak, I think that's how you pronounce it, he's evidence. So all of these people, and I can say so many more names, but all of these people are doing what I want to do, which is share that feeling, that feeling that you get when you are in that state of calm, where there's no drama, where there's no stress, where everything just falls into place, where all your needs are met, where all your desires are had, where all your wants are taken care of. You got it. It is such a beautiful, peaceful place to be, and I want everyone to be there. And so then I have ideas of how that can look like. This YouTube channel, right? Um, and podcast. And I want to be on talk, te TED Talks. I can say that eventually. TED Talks. There you go. I said it on January 30th, 2023. I'm going to be on TED Talks. And I'm going to be talking about self-care. I've got some self-care workshops that I'm going to be doing out in the community. I'm really trying to spread that. So this is the first step of making my dreams, my wants, reality, to live my dreams. And um, I don't know if you can see it right here. Ah. Okay, it's a tattoo that says, I am worthy of having dreams and living them. 
and I have it tattooed on me. That statement there was life changing. It brings tears to my eyes actually. And it was probably about six months before I started my self-care journey that I actually realized I was worthy of dreams and living them. But when I made that realization, a whole fucking, what would it be, door opened up. Because, well, what are dreams? What are goals? Like, what does this mean? Because I'm very goal-driven, and we know that, right? I set a goal and I obtain it because that's just what you do. But is a goal a dream? What's the difference? When does a goal turn into a dream or a dream into a goal? Anyway, I had to figure all that kind of stuff out. And we're not going to talk about all that now. Point is, about six months ago, I realized I am worthy of having dreams and living them. I'll let that sit there for a second. Wow. And I told a colleague of mine, and I won't mention his name, but I told him. And he was somebody that I really admired, that I looked up to, that I felt connected to, that I felt safe with. And that's key, because there's not very many people that I felt safe with. I felt safe with him. And he really helped me get to where I'm at right now. He may not know it, but he really did. Just by listening, just by showing that I had value, that I was heard, that I was loved, respected. Those are things that he taught me just by interacting with me and just the way he interacted with me. And that gave me the courage to kind of go out a little bit further, right? Kind of, and it made me come to the conclusion that, you know what? I am worthy of having dreams and living them. And when I shared that with him in his office, I didn't realize how life-changing that statement was until he asked me if he could write it out on the board. And he did. I am worthy of living dreams, KD. And that started it all. So, here's a funny thing. In my work, my other line of work, which I'm very passionate about, and it's going to come out, I'll talk about it. It's all about developmental trauma, healing brains. But one of the things that I really worked on and, and shared with the caregivers that I work with and educate is the importance of self-care. Self-care is so important, especially in my line of work. When you are taking care of other people, when you are dealing with some people that have went through some really hard, bad things and they're just little, right? Or people who've worked with adults who have gone through really hard, bad things and they still may be really big, but they're still little, right? So self-care is so important because burnout is so high in professions that care for other people and that deal with really hard things. So self-care is something that I would work with the caregivers. And I came up with this self-care workshop this one day. And I did it. I did it for the foster parents. And the, the self-care workshop uh, had a lot of cool things in it. And I had them laughing until they were crying. And we worked on some hard stuff and came up with a self-care plan. But when I started the session with everybody, I just fully disclosed and said, I am really not the person to be teaching self-care which actually makes me the perfect person, right? Do as I say, not as I do. Because at that time, I did practice self-care. Well, what would self-care be? Hmm. Because we used to think self-care was all about, you know, going out, having a drink. I didn't drink, so I didn't do that. Self-care, you know, going to the spa. I never did that. Um, we'll talk about all that kind of stuff later. So anyway, I said to them that self-care is not really my thing but I knew the importance of it and I knew that I had to share the information. And so I did several self-care workshops and would start off like that and really do believe that they need to take care of them. And when I worked with clients, I would always bring in that self-care piece because it's so important, right? And then also the forgiveness piece of self and having some compassion for self. I would do that with them. Didn't practice it, but I would do it for them because they're worthy of it because 
I even said to them, you're worthy of this. You are worthy of self-care. You are worthy of love. I said that to clients. And I never did it. Right? It's just weird how all these things kind of happen. Anyway. So, back in the office with my colleague. And he wrote up, I'm worthy of having dreams. And, and um, I was doing my self-care workshops. And life is pretty good. I'm actually kind of happy, right? And then, you know your Amazon... Uh, news reel there, right? And they always come up with things that you might like, recommendations. So they always have some kind of recommendation that I think you'll like. And this book, so this recommendation came out when I was actually facilitating self-care, okay? The Witch's Book of Self-Care came up in my Amazon recommendation. And I saw this book and I was like, Oh my God, a sign, guess who's a witch and who does self care? I totally need this. So I got it. You know, what I practice has nothing to do with the self care, just so you know, it's not all that, but it's my spiritual side and it is what I practice. So of course it does come in anyway, but when I do my workshops, we don't go all witchy or do we? Okay, so this book came in, it came in literally the next day, you know how they have that next day order? Got it, I think, I didn't even open it. I'm like, oh cool, and put it on my shelf. And it sat there for a while, a long while actually, almost six months, I guess. And then I decided, oh, okay, I should open it because I wanted to re, like, you know, update and redo my PowerPoint slides for my self-care workshop, so good. Maybe they got some good stuff in here. And then I open it and I start looking. And, you know, it's your really basic, basic stuff. And it talks about, you know, stereotypes of self-care and the self-care guilt, right? And then how to release that guilt. These are all kind of really good stuff we need to know about. And talking about the importance and about being authentic. And just like really good start. But what I wanted to read here to you is what it said. At its most basic, engaging in self-care is about self-respect. Self-care is about taking care of yourself, making that stand and declaring that, yes, you are important, you do matter. Simple self-care is part of your efforts to be, to be the best person that you can be. An idea that renovates, renovates and magic. Okay, well, can we edit that? Anyway, we're not going to talk about that. Um, point is, is that it said self-care is about self-respect. That, for some reason, really hit home for me. It's about taking care of yourself and making that stand and declaring that, yes, you are important. You do matter. That's what I said to the clients all the time. You matter. You're worth it. And I wasn't even doing it for myself. That just kind of made me go, wait a minute. I want respect. Huh. Anyway. And I started. And I did the first exercise. And I did what needed to be done. And that's how I ended up. So from this book to this book, because then I get into mindfulness, right? which ends up to oh, gratitude and this book. We can do a whole session on this book. It is basically what it is. Like seriously, it's 3,000 questions all about you. What's your favorite bedtime story? What's your favorite restaurant? How fast can you run? Do you think parenting classes should be mandatory for all parents? Random questions. You know how hard it is for me to do this book? It really, it is hard. I've actually something I'm going to have to work on. All the other books. Anyway, okay. Running out of time. So I'm going to kind of wrap it up for this session. Yay me. So I started with that book. And that book led to the Daily Blessings book. And this led to that book. And this book gets to the point now where for over a year, every day, I write. 
I write like some kind of gratitude exercise or some kind of self-reflection thing happening, you know, self-care practice. I have a routine that I really stick to in the morning. Routine is self-care, by the way. It is. I've really started to learn more about crystals and working with crystals in my life, being really intentional with meditation. I struggle with meditation. This is something, actually a big reason why I wanted to do this with everybody who's going to come along is to let them know that meditation is hard <laughs> really and I half the time when I do it like when I was doing my 21 days of appreciation or abundance pardon me 21 days of abundance challenge with Deepak there um I was hard and out of that however five minutes that we actually meditate I might have done it like 30 seconds in stillness because half the time I'm thinking about am I doing it right Okay, so that's a whole thing, which is why I'm redoing it again. Anyway, so I want to be like, share that kind of stuff because seriously, I think Mel Robbins said it. If I can do it, anyone can do it. And it is so true. If I can do it, anyone can do it. Wow. That says a lot. And I want to be alongside and help because... It would have been nice if I had somebody alongside and helped. I mean, I had people come to me at all the right times and I'm so blessed on the journey that I started and that I'm gonna continue on for all my days and become a crone. Ooh, that's another story too. Anyway, um, okay, so before I end, here's an interesting story. I did this book. Seriously? I did this book probably mm, like my middle son would have been two, so like 20 years ago. 20 years ago. It's the first time I did this book. And then I did it again when my younger son was probably two. Um, his aunt actually had the book and was doing it and had recommended it, but I already had it. And I thought, damn, I'll do it again. And so that would have been um, 10 years ago, mm, 15 years ago-ish. So I still had it because it's hard to throw away books. And I'm going to do it again. And so what I've decided to do is do it with you. Oh, yeah. So each week, I guess, will be a video on what I need to do. I can't remember what it was, to be quite honest with you what I did. I do remember I had to go through my closet and get rid of clothes. I remember that actually. I don't know what week that is, but we'll figure it out and we'll do it together. And you know what's really cool? So the things that I'm learning with um, Deepak in his meditation practices and the things I'm learning with Mel Robbins and the things I'm learning with even Bob Proctor, I know who would have thought, but Bob Proctor, and the things that I'm going to be learning through this book here. Even the things that I'm learning with the polyvagal theory. Yeah, I know, right? Going into like the brain science world here. So with Porges and Siegel, right? Things I'm learning with them all are the same. It's all the same messaging. It really is just presented and said differently. It's like this message is so everybody needs to know because that's, where we are in life that's what we are we need to know our spiritual beings our authentic self that ball of energy and everyone's so different that it's like the universe is providing different methods different versions of something of getting the message out all the same thing just said differently and sometimes having different motivations because people are motivated by different things and we have to acknowledge that and that's okay but it's all the same. If we all broke it down, it's the same core message. Just like if every single person, we all got together in the world, doesn't matter what hole you crawl out of, what country you come from, good, bad, evil, doesn't matter. If we strip everything all down, we're all the same. It's like energy. Wow, hey. Anyway. I hope that you enjoy my ramblings because there will be a lot of them. And I will take you on my journey, whether that is doing 
an exercise in here, whether it's sharing something from the past, whether it's creating a little this and that conjuring stuff, Ooh, right? We'll do it alongside. I'll share my journey. I'm open. Let's do it.